Each year, around the world, hundreds of thousands, millions of birds, animals, fish, and insects are on the move, migrating with the seasons, following their sources of food, returning to places safe to birth and rear their young. Up and down North America and across the United States, wild animals migrate to safe harbors that are free from predators and man-made threats. Even species that don't migrate need to roam to find suitable mates and food. Consider a Montana wolverine named M3. Wolverines can force grizzlies away from a kill, which we can all agree, if you weigh just 25 pounds, is pretty badass. And the most badass wolverine any of the biologists had run into was M3. The scientists managed to trap him and put on a satellite collar programmed to uplink M3's location every five minutes. I skied in to help handle him, one biologist said, and he was as big and snarly as promised. And yet when he faced us down in his glossy, rich, chocolate coat, he was, above all, beautifully and indomitably wild. The scientists were astounded to learn how far a male wolverine roams. His territory was hundreds of square miles. But the most surprising thing happened when he left Montana in the middle of February. He approached the base of Mount Cleveland, elevation 10,466 feet. He climbed into the cirque on the peak south side, then started up the flanks, climbing to the 8,000 foot level. And remember, this is the middle of winter in Montana. Then he started up the steep south face and kept climbing. At 10,000 feet, he gained the summit ridge and finally topped out on the highest peak in Glacier National Park. And why? Well, you guessed it, because it's there. So after hanging out on the summit and taking in the view, he traversed down the opposite side of the peak, heading north and maintaining his reputation as one badass wolverine. Thousands of animals around the world need the freedom to roam. With lightweight bones and oversized hearts, pronghorn are the fastest big game animals in North America, capable of running up to 60 miles an hour. Satellite radio callers have captured data on the animal's movements. Every year, one group leaves the Teton National Park in Wyoming and migrates south to their wintering grounds 200 miles away. But as they migrate, they encounter fences around adjacent ranches that they can't jump over because they've evolved to run fast, and their spindly legs force them to try and crawl under. But this isn't the only obstacle. Once pronghorn arrive in their wintering grounds, they are now met with hundreds of recently installed gas wells. 10,000 wells have been proposed. In addition to these physical barriers, there's an even more dangerous threat to migration, man-made climate change. The planet is warming, and wildlife's habitats are moving literally from under their feet, shifting to higher latitudes and cooler altitudes. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change predicts that if temperatures rise by 3.5 degrees Celsius, well within current forecasts, then 40 to 70 percent of assessed wildlife will be at increased risk of extinction. If this were to happen, what might be the consequences to our own species? No one can predict if we humans would go extinct. But even if we survive, we would likely be living on a planet dominated by only a few species that are the most adaptable, the so-called weed species. Is there a way to avoid living on a planet of weeds? There is, by connecting habitat fragments with wildlife corridors, an adaptive response to climate change that could save biodiversity on our planet. To better understand this solution, let's examine the Canadian lynx. More than twice the size of a common house cat, the lynx has very dense fur suited for cold climates, and it occurs in Canada, Alaska, 
the Northeast U.S., and several states in the American West. As the climate warms, habitats are diminished. If, as a world society, we maintain current status quo environmental policies, scientists predict lynx habitat will shrink to here by 2060 and here by 2090. These are not necessarily areas where the lynx will live, only areas where it would be able to live. By taking action today, we can dramatically improve the chances for the lynx. But still, as for many species, the marooned habitats are likely to be too small for the long-term survival of the lynx. So the solution is to connect them with wildlife corridors. Data proves that if these bridges of habitat are protected, the wildlife will use them to migrate. But it also indicates bottlenecks where wildlife would have to find their way around the increasing spread of suburbs and housing developments. Not to mention crossing interstates that can be dangerous both for wildlife and humans. But there are solutions, such as building overpasses and underpasses at strategic locations where corridors intersect with highways. There is one being planned right now in Wyoming that will protect the animals and the safety of drivers. Funds are now available for ranchers to install pronghorn friendly fencing that allows the pronghorn to crawl under but still contains the cattle and sheep. And oil companies are starting to cluster their gas wells, up to 30 on a single pad, giving the pronghorn more freedom to roam. Similar efforts need to be made for dozens of species. The first step is to identify all the wildlife corridor hotspots across North America and to allocate funds to protect corridors on both public and private lands. We have entered a new era, one driven by climate change. We recognize that we all live on the same planet and that the health of our planet is now facing challenges that our species has never before encountered. But there is also a new attitude that more and more of us are sensing. It's inspired by the vision that we can meet this challenge, meet it for ourselves and for our children, meet it for the wild creatures with whom we share our home planet. It's founded on the understanding and commitment that the only way we will meet this challenge is by working together.